If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome everybody to TruthRadioShow.com. I'm Dan Badanti. And welcome to this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So if you missed chapters 1 through 3, please stop right here. Go watch them and come back to this one. Uh, because you won't understand what's going on. So um, before we begin, like always, um, we do a specific Bible study approach. Number one, and very most important of anything, is to pray for wisdom and understanding. So if you want to join me right now in a prayer. So Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, we love you so much with all our hearts and souls. And we ask you to forgive us individually of any sins we committed, any abominations, trespasses, or transgressions. And we are sorry, Lord. And uh, just please forgive us and anoint us with your precious blood. And help us, Lord, to avoid sin and temptation. And Heavenly Father, we come before you again. Uh, to once again, ask you for divine intervention and to have your beautiful Holy Spirit have him write your word upon our hearts today, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 today. And we ask you to comfort everybody that's going through any kind of pain or suffering or sickness, especially this time of year, and to help heal us, Lord. Heal us spiritually, heal us physically, mentally, and we love you so much, Father. And we pray that you can protect us all from the forces of evil. In your mighty name we pray, amen. So that we do not now, we read the scripture in context, because context is key. And let the scripture interpret scripture, don't lean on your own understanding. So if you've got a Bible, guys, please open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So, continuing on from chapter 3. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we faint not. You know, we don't worry. Because, like, we have the ministry now, and we received mercy. So, but, have renounced the hidden things of our dishonesty. So the hidden things are like the sins we committed and, uh, you know, just, you know, the skeletons in the closet, if you want to put it that way. Renounce them. You know, the, of the uh, dishonesty. Uh, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the, in the sight of God. So, not walking in craftiness. Uh, let me see what that means in craftiness definition Bible. And to ability to do anything. So, not handling the word of God deceitfully. So, yeah, especially that. You know, you know the word of God is a scripture. And what's written upon the hearts. And don't ever do that deceitfully. Yeah. So, so but by manifestation. Of the truth commending ourselves. Manifestation is the Holy Spirit and the Spirit within us. Manifesting us. Manifestation of truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So, if you're not living in the Spirit, if you're not walking in the Spirit, right? You're hiding it. It's going to hide to other people, right? So if the, you know, somebody says, oh, that guy, he's always, you know, good people, kind of people and all that. But if you're not showing the glory of the Lord, it's not shown to them, the people who don't believe, right? Or the unbelievers, whatever, that don't know, know any of this stuff, right? So if you're constantly, you know, doing these good, thing, good things to people and all that, glorifying the Lord, it's going to be revealed to them. Oh, wow. Let me give this Christian thing a shot. And whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So who's the God of this world? And look, check this out, right? I want to point this out. Now, this is really cool. Because I can use this for so many examples. So you got people out there. You got New Agers. You got 
people need to call. You got people who just mock the Bible to say, oh, well, there's many gods. And then you tell them, no, there's only one God. Well, your Bible says there's other gods. No, the Bible does not say that. Then they'll show a verse just like this. And you simply point it out to them, right? If you notice the word God right here in this context, the God of this world is Satan. The Bible makes that very clear, right? Notice, take a good note at the word here, God, right? Notice it's not capitalized. And I brought this up, I got to bring it up all the time for new listeners and everything else to keep our memories refreshed. Because they're very deceitful as people. And I said, a lot of people say, well, they are right because the Bible does say God's and God, you know, that. It's like, no, if you paid attention. If you notice, right, uh, you see the word God, God's, and Lord. Referring to other people other than God and Jesus. Notice how they're not capitalized. When you see the word God, God's, goddess, or Lord, referring to anybody else but Jesus Christ and uh, our Heavenly Father, they're always lowercase. And any time you see the word God or Lord capitalized, it's always referring to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because simple terms, that if it's not capitalized, it's referring to a false God, a false Lord. Capitalized is referring to the only one true God, the only one true Lord. And you'll never see a true goddess because there ain't no goddess. I don't think the Bible mentions that. Anyway, but yeah. So just always be wise with this because these new ages, these deceivers out there know the Bible. Some of these people know well enough to know to trick people with this. So the God of this world is just saying that he's that, uh, Satan's God? No, not at all. But he is appointed as God of this world, but not God in the case of being the Heavenly Father or anything like him. But in whom the God of this world blinded the minds of them which believe not. And then you see this all the time. Satan blinds people's minds. Especially, uh, uh, yeah, unbelievers. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, perfect example, right here. Boom, right there. Perfect example when you gotta come across one of these people. Oh, yeah, it took more of the gods, right? Look, look at the difference. Why is the word God with a low case here and the word God with a uh, capital here? Yeah. It's not a typo, it's not a, you know, nothing like that. Because it's referring to a, the lowercase g, right? Is referring to a false god. They talk about Satan. Right? And because people worship Satan as God. People of the world. And he's known as God of the world, but he's not God, like the big G. <laughs> the, the capital G, God, right here, is referring to who? The Heavenly Father. And again, and it defines it, the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. All right, just a quick tip there, guys. Uh, it's a, This is what you call spiritual warfare because um, you've got to be very, very um, on top of things. You've got to be on your toes when you're battling these people and debates and all that stuff or countering them with their lies. The serpent, Satan, he knows the scripture better than any Christian out there. And he knows how to utilize that scripture. And this is why, guys, this is why uh, we need the Holy Spirit. Because if we have the Holy Spirit with us, we can outdo these people. Not on our own court. You know, you got to see like Stephen Dawkins, right? This guy for years has run conferences, lectures and all that. He sits in a whole hall of people. People pay for this, right? And he sits there and bashes the Bible, brings stuff up like this. He knows the Bible very well. And he's, he, he can easily deceive people. Because the dragons with him, um, the god of this world, Satan, they work through those people. They know it very well. So you're not going to outwit them on your own. You need the Holy Spirit to do that. 
The Holy Spirit working through you, you could put people like him to shame. You could put Satan to shame. On your own accord, you're not going to be able to do that. So I want to point that out in the last chapter we showed about the Holy Spirit having it written upon your heart. So if you have the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit have the Word of God written upon your heart, even Satan himself is not going to fool you. Without the Holy Spirit writing the Word upon your heart, the Holy, Satan himself is going to uh, outwit you. Again, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which don't believe, that's Satan, lest, right, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, I was just saying this, right? Not our, I just said this. For we preach not ourselves. We don't preach, okay, from our own stuff. But Jesus Christ, the Lord, ourselves, your servants for Jesus Christ's sake. We don't do, you know, we're not preaching for ourselves. We're preaching for the Lord Jesus. We're not our self-advocates. We're not representing Dan Badandi or whatever your name is. We're there in the message of the Lord. So when we come to people to preach or whatever or tell people, I don't come in my name. I don't come for my glory. I don't come for my uh, whatever. I come in the name of, I'm a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. I'm not no prophet. I'm not no... Um, person of high stature or holier than thou art. No. I am just simple message. You take the message as you will and you, that's your accord to deal with God. I'm not your judge, jury, executioner. Jesus. Is. So you don't preach of it not of yourself, but you preach of Jesus. We are servants. Like when the angels, right? When the angels, or we read the scriptures or even real life accounts, when angels came, God's angels, came to people, right? What did they tell them? We are here with messengers of the Lord. And sometimes when people see these angels, they bow down. It's written in the scripture, so they bow down to them and the angels told them right away, no, no, get up. Don't bow to me, don't pray, anything like that. I am just a messenger from the Lord. And at times so, um, you know, when we, when we, okay, when we go out and um, witness the people, whatever the case, so we teach the word of God, People for tendency, you know, Christians, they'll like look up you in high regard. And when you have a big ministry, this happens to everybody just about. And, you know, the people who humble themselves, uh, the good ministries, the people who exalt themselves like Joel Osteen and all these 700 club people that have, uh, you know, 10,000 people in their church, whatever the case, uh, they fill auditoriums and all that are on all over TV. They are glorifying themselves. They're not servants of Jesus Christ. They're servants of their own. You, we always must humble ourselves. There's even times when people come up to me, they like look at, up to me like high, some like high regard. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. And I got to keep myself humble as well. Because all we are is servants of the Lord. That's it. Nobody to be recognized, or, you know, special recognition. We are just servants of the Lord. Any special recognition and all that should go to Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Again, here we go, like the last chapter, right? In our hearts. Shine in our lights, our hearts. It's written upon our hearts as well. If we have the Spirit of God, you know, the, the knowledge of God written upon our hearts and shining in our hearts, we can give the light of knowledge to people. Without that, you're not going to, you know, I mean, you can go to seminary school, like I was just talking about the last chapter. You can go to seminary school, you can go to college and all that stuff, right? Yeah. You're not going to have that light. You're not going to have that um, Holy Spirit's uh, knowledge and, and wisdom, you know? You don't have the spiritual applications without the, the Holy Spirit. So, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. 
earthen vessels. I'm not roughly, I'm sorry, earthen. I always, let me see what earthen vessels means. Uh, it's used to preserve land and deed. Let me see. Uh, Bible meaning. Denotes a plenty of abundance of things precious and valuable. All right, so. That puts, you see, uh, I, I almost uh, messed up because I just said earthly vessels. So I was thinking things of earth, like treasures of the earth and all that. So this is why it's important to really take your time and understand this because if I would have skipped over that, that would have just deframed the whole meaning of this verse. Because we, you know, the, when the Bible says that don't store treasures up in the earth because they, uh, they rust and mold and whatnot and thieves steal it, you store your treasures in heaven. So that's what I was thinking of. So now I stop myself and it's like, no, it's earthen, not earthly, earthen vessels. The whole different meaning, this is why you need to, um, no, no shame in looking the word up. So earthen vessels is plenty and a bunch of things precious and valuable. So, but we have a plenty of abundance of things precious and valuable in earthen vessels, right? So that's what that is. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So these earthen vessels are power, you know, treasures of the Lord that gives you, right? It's not gold, silver, or anything like that, you know, money or whatever. You know, it's nothing like that. It's spiritual. That the excellency of the power of, may of God be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So he's showing you, right? And we are here on the earth, the world troubles us on every side, but we're not distressed, right? The world may, purposely makes us perplexed, but we're not in despair. The world makes you persecute you, right? But you're not forsaken, because this is God. You see what's going on? God's not uh, despairing you. He's not forsaking you. The world casts you down, but because of God, you're not destroyed. Always bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. But I'm um, saying that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So the world, you know, will like him and you'll like, um, the, the thing is the world's constantly crucifying Jesus. That's why when you see some churches out, you know, fake religions, they always have Jesus on the cross and like the Catholic Church, right? That's constantly, Jesus rose from that. Jesus was taken off the cross and rose from the dead. To have a cross with Jesus on it, guys, number one is a second commandment violation. It's idolatry. When God says you worship it or not, it's still it's a second commandment violation because it says don't make any engraven images that's in heaven or in earth or in the water or anything. Don't make them. So to put an image of Jesus Christ on the cross is blasphemy from number one. It's an, it's an abomination. Doesn't matter what your heart is. Oh, God knows my heart. No, that's not how it works. To have an image of Jesus Christ on the cross is constantly crucifying him. He's rose from that. He, he's got victory now. So you're always bearing the, about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, right? But that the life is also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. So he had victory at the cross. Ro rose from the dead and he's off that cross now. And him is now manifest in our bodies as believers. Not saying, not saying that we are like Jesus Christ or we have powers like Jesus Christ because we got people who take that way out of context. It's not saying it. Because they say, you know, these new ages, oh, you said the Bible says that, you know, God is in us. We are made in his image. Doesn't mean what God's, does, this here doesn't mean what Jesus <coughs> or anything like Jesus or God. It, yeah, uh, Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Doesn't mean we're Jesus ourselves. <laughs> For we, 
which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. So on the earth, yeah, the world wants to deliver you to death all the time for Jesus' sake. Because they persecuted him first. Remember they said they hate him first? Jesus said this, and he said they're going to hate you too. They're going to persecute you too. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And again, it doesn't mean with Jesus. <laughs> he manifests in us, and that's why we're persecuted and everything else, for his sake. Which is a good thing. It means you're doing your job. <laughs> so then death works in us, but life is in you. So you, you get what this is saying? The world wants you dead, all right? The world hates you because the God of this world is who? Satan. As we just read, right? The rest too. Uh, four, I'm sorry. So the death works in us, right? It works in us, but life is in you. And what's that life? That's Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. You know, God so loved the earth, and whoever believes it shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's in the spiritual sense, by the way. Doesn't mean you're not going to die because everybody's, every man's appointed to die once. But you go into the second life, eternal life, if you believe in the Lord. <coughs> so we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. So again, that word as it is written. So you wouldn't know what that means or whatever, anything like that, if you didn't know the Old Testament. So we're having the same spirit of faith. Same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he show, I'm sorry, he which raised up the Lord Jesus Christ shall raise up us in the, by Jesus also. I, I just butchered that, sorry guys. So, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, because what happens when I read this is uh, old English and I try to rephrase it, which I probably shouldn't do, but so you understand it. So knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So the Lord, Heavenly Father, <coughs> raised up Jesus Christ. Right? We all know that he resurrected from the dead. So also know that he's going to raise us up also by Jesus, because of Jesus. And we will be present with Jesus. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound in the glory of God. So everything for our sakes, right? That the abundance of grace through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. Grace was offered to us at the cross. Salvation, right? For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. So I'll really contemplate on this from here, right? So, so for which cause us not to faint, right? Which, you know, to faint would be, could be many things, but faint is like uh, give up or whatever the case, you know, pass out. It means different things, but, but through our outward man, we perish, right? So our body, our flesh is going to perish. But the inward man, that's the spirit, is renewed day by day. Who you are inside is renewed day by day. We get old. We, our bodies change and they start, you know, like, you know, they're not going to die. But our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for the moment, worketh for us far more exceeding in an external weight of glory. It, eternal, I'm sorry. So, yeah, our light affliction light affliction, right? Which is but for a moment. Works for us as far as more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. 
while we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What does that mean? We look, you look to the spirit world. You look to the God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Because here's the thing, here's the real fact, and this is going to blow a lot of people's minds. So everything in this world right now, right, the things you can smell, touch, feel, taste, uh, whatever the case, yeah, yeah, they're real in the reality, but the things that you cannot see are more real than what you're looking at on your phone, your computer right now. Let that sink in for a minute. It's more real than the clothes on your body, more real than um, the car you drive. Now, I'm not saying we live in a simulation or anything like that. Don't get me wrong with that. You know, so I'm just saying, we're supposed to look at the things which are not seen. That's the spirit. Because it goes on to say, for the things that which are seen are temporal. In other words, everything here you see, when the clothes and I mentioned on your body and uh, the car you drive, the computer, uh, tablet, iPad, or uh, phone you're watching me on right now, all these things are temporal. They're going to one day uh, end up in the junkyard, decomposing, whatever the case, right? But the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? You get what this is saying. So he said, don't look at the things that which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. And obviously you've got to look, I mean, the, yeah, I, I gotta explain this stuff because sometimes people just go above and beyond like this uh, ridiculous. I don't try to be nice about that, but yeah, these people just take it to a whole new level. The Bible here is not saying, okay, that you know, not to drive a car or you know, whatever. You know, what I mean, you get the point. But yeah, you, you know, I mean, you, you go about your life and everything else, absolutely. But what you're supposed to do is look toward the afterlife. Look toward the Spirit. Look for the Holy Spirit for guidance. Things like that. Look for the stuff in the spiritual world. Say, you know, store your treasures in the spiritual realm. Yeah, you know, people's like uh, harbor money away and everything else. No. You're supposed to store your treasures in heaven. The spiritual gifts. Those don't rust. Those don't uh, rot away. Thieves can't steal. For the things which are seen are temporal. So everything we got today, as I mentioned, right, eventually it's going to go away. Somehow, some way, it's going to go away. Uh, something's going to happen to it, whatever the case. It's all going to go away. Everything you see in the world eventually is going to go away because God's going to make a new heaven and earth. Everything, it uh, doesn't matter what you have, jewelry or whatever the case. Everything is all temporal. But the things that which are not seen are eternal. That's the spirit. So your body, go look in the mirror right now, right? Take a look in the mirror or your selfie cam. That's temporal. Your skin, bones, teeth, you know, your face, your whole body is all temporal. The spirit is eternal. And it's only through Jesus Christ, by the way. So I uh, want you guys like uh, go ponder on this. I just I take your time and read the scripture. Like you said, you know what I mean? Don't take my word, anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. Just really take your time to read this, guys. This is why it took a half hour to read this, because I wanted to really pull out the meat and potatoes of the of Bible. 18 verses, heck, you could have read it in, well, phew, maybe two minutes, not even. But you don't learn nothing doing that. You gotta, you really need to contemplate and really understand what these things mean. Then you fully grasp and understand what the Scripture is saying. So uh, check me out at truthradioshow.com. It's our one-stop website. And we got, you know, YouTube, Rumble, and we got a backup YouTube and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, so if you want to know where we'll be broadcasting for certain shows, it's go, always go to truthradioshow.com. And the show of what we're doing currently, or the next show, whatever, it's always going to be linked up on the website. So all you have to do is click. You actually watch it right off the website. So please go check that out. So... Uh, thank you for tuning in to this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we will see you for chapter 5, God willing. So love you all. God bless. Shalom. And you are the resistance.